Morning guys, this is my table full of plants and the only thing missing here is the tray that I sent with Betty Boo Brown. She brought us that lovely Angora rabbit and so we sent her to home with some herbs. And as you can see, I have used a lot of secondhand materials. I've used milk jugs, I've used the tops of lids for trays, we've used old tin cans and sour cream containers. This one looks sad because I forgot to water it, not because of the container. The most expensive thing that I use when I'm gardening is my potting soil and it dries you. And this is the kids tray that they just barely planted and I need to harvest some of this mint and get it drying because I, we only really need one, one plant in there and it would be happier. I struggle with onions every, every year. And I almost killed my borage because once again, I didn't water it. When you have this many trays, it's really hard to get to everything when it needs it without overwatering or underwatering. And these, these are the two lights that we did it all with in this little, that is not, I don't know, that might be a south facing window, I don't remember. But that's how we did it. out this morning. I have them on this side of the house because there's no breeze and um, the light is a little bit more filtered. Definitely less breeze here than there is out there. I see a little bit of motion. I'm gonna have to watch these guys today. It's not real hot out here but the sun is quite bright and they will lose. Let's see I don't think I've had any of these guys out here. So there's just a teeny, teeny, tiny rustle of a breeze. And um, I need to pot all these guys into bigger pots. I overseeded on purpose, but I do need to keep on top of that. Here I have my Russian Bocking uh, Comfrey, my Parsley. Those ones in the back need to be fertilized. Until they're, they're under a good strong light, but you can see how light in color they are, so I need to fertilize those. Um, more comfrey. No, that might not be comfrey, that might be borage. They both kind of look similar to each other, and then these ones I believe are chamomile. And then we have some cutting celery, more basil tomatoes, more parsley, mint that I've already harvested sage that has come back nicely and a whole bunch of pole beans that the girls started. So we're going to give them a little bit of something out in the sun. Well, I, I'm going to kind of keep an eye on the weather. I don't want to put all my babies out in the sunlight at the same time because I don't know how they're going to react. These guys, see that? That could be from the sun I put them out in uh, last week or it could be from the water. But I don't know which it is so I'm, I'm just going to hold some of them back. They're under the light today. It's not a real strong light, but it's enough to keep them going. Once you plant them, they just take off. They're, they just go crazy taking off. So just because they're a little slow and a little uh, delicate right now doesn't mean that once you put them in the soil or give them enough space, they don't just take off. It's kind of cold out here today. The sun is nice and bright, but it's in the 40s little brisk bit of a breeze but the um, the grass is starting to come up and we're doing one of our last checkup walkthrough type things um, this little circle is where I want to have the garden just because it, it doesn't interfere interfere with the lawn or the rest of the land and uh, I just like the shape the grass up here on the lawn is not fantastic, so I'm grateful for the grass out in the pasture being pretty good. 
we'll have to wait and see as we mow and stuff like that to see how the grass is going to turn out. True. I need to reset this one side. I think it's a little bit tilted from what I want it to be. But it's nice that it's already here. And the grass out in the pasture is pretty good, I think. I do love listening to the birds. And there's only this one, there's this one spot on the fence that needs to be pulled up and reattached to the posts. But for the rest of it, it's pretty good. Look at those, um, what are they called? Tulips. I don't think those are tulips, are they? What kind of flowers are they called? Daffodils? And I think the white ones are tulips. So there has been a complication with the homestead that we want to purchase in that it is a manufactured modular, we don't know which one it is. The, the memories are different between different people who are the sellers and they've gone back and forth on it. But the loan changes depending on whether it is manufactured modular and whether or not it's ever been moved. We are here today to look at manufactured home village, I guess, and try to learn some of the rules that go with manufactured homes because we may not get this property now that we wanted because if it was moved, lenders are only willing to lend 80% of the asking price. You have to come up with the rest and then anybody that we would need to sell it to afterwards if we decided to move in a few years, they would also have to have a lender that would only give 80% because even though we haven't moved the, the home, the previous owners sounds like they did so they would have the same parameters as us we could we could swing it we could do the 80 percent down but we don't know if the next lender or the next um, purchaser of the home could which would kind of limit us to people who would be willing to buy the house or be able be actually able to buy the house so we have to kind of look at that as far as long term if in five years we wanted to sell it we need to be able to sell it instead of having it be as complicated as it has been for us some of them are actually really cute again we really liked the inside of the house that that we wanted to buy we really liked the inside the floor plan was really nice i think that one is super cute is it just pink colors? yeah it is it's just like well i look at it and i just think oh it's already got trees and <laughs> some depth to it the trees don't come with it right? i know but that's the only thing i care about I always like a kitchen with an island because then if you're going to be canning, you have somewhere to put all your canning supplies. Just a little bit more workspace. If you homestead and you're going to be doing a lot of from scratch cooking, your kitchen is the heart of your home. So we may have found one that actually we don't hate. Okay. I like this one. I'm not willing to spend the price and then buy the land and the house that we have to take off. Correct. But. I like this one. But ultimately, we were doing some ulterior research as well. But did you want to point to the slide out pantry? You can see. I got to visualize. Slide out pantry. And I love everything that has, like, it, I know it's brand new, but some parts of it look like they've been, you know. Used. <laughs> what? Have they? Huh? She likes the island. Second hand. First she, thing she pointed out. I do love the island. So. Any kitchen that has an island. I also like texture. I don't like one big anything. I want it to have the dimension of having the bars, the um, beams on the top. You've got half walls. They make it feel like it isn't just a big barn. But it has a bigger pantry, it looks like. And it has drawers in the... It has drawers in the... Island. Built oh, for a living, a built one. for life. Yeah, that's a huge master. Wow, huge. they have a, a table in the bathroom. Well, yeah, because you got to do some work in the bathroom. Eat dinner. All right. Play some for a cheesy. Build a table. 
Build a table. On the table. Yeah. We didn't like the mobile homes. Right across the street is shipping containers. We could go build one of those up. What do y'all think? Let us know in the comments. So this one room is bigger than the off-grid cabin back in Idaho. This one room, they call this the party house. And this is the party living room. Oh my gosh, the it is. It's room. actually bigger than the tiny house in Idaho, this one room. Right. The thing I like about it is that it does not have carpet. And they're anywhere. In and, the and it's sectioned off in the rooms instead of just really big open space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they make your bed, your bathrooms as big as a bedroom, and you have complete privacy on the actual toilet. A door. Coincidentally, you got a door. Coincidentally, I actually have that on the house. It's out there. So, and ah, that's your bath. That's right. And shower. So one thing for those of you who are looking for a manufactured or a modular home, just know that if you have environmental toxin sensitivity, things that um, irritate asthma, irritate autoimmune disorders, formaldehyde and paints and VOCs and all those things really aggravate those kind of existing conditions. And if you already have sensitive health but you don't have those, they might push you into something more serious. And so um, one of the reasons that so many people are talking about getting back to nature and building a tiny home and this kind of thing is that they can be more selective about the materials that are used in the home, more natural materials, more pricey materials, so they're going smaller so that they can upgrade the materials that they're putting into their home. So even though these are beautiful, they're mostly plastic <laughs> and um, I mean they really are plastic and they're going to be outgassing for many, many years. If you decide that this is something you need to go for, uh, make sure that you have good ventilation. Maybe get a variety or a, a model that maybe doesn't have carpet in it. You know, there's a lot of different things you can do to try to get around the off-gassing of the materials in the house, but in the end, it is still going to be out-gassing for years. Um, so for, for me, having been in and out of these houses for the last hour, I'm starting to get a sore throat. I'm getting a little bit lethargic, not cranky, but just kind of not feeling so hot. They did spray the grass out here. I can smell the herbicides. Um, so I don't know which one is actually making me sick. I do have environmental toxin sensitivity, so I don't know which one of those is playing on me now, but I'm getting a sore throat. I don't feel real well. And so I wanted to just kind of point that out to those of you who are looking into this kind of thing. I'm going to show the sign, walking up yeah. and showing the sign. Yeah, I mm. think that's a good idea. Don't put that in the video, my voice. <laughs> <laughs>